Sheesh. Can't remember what their names were, but they were my age. I would use this, like both they used to use hard they used to use heroin and, and coke. So they were like they've probably been injected since they were like 13 or 14, but they were young man, they've literally been like hard users, they don't go to school or nothing, they just on the street all day. I grew up in um, Barking it up until I was about 10. I left for secondary school to go live in Essex, which was a Chelmsford. Yeah, I feel like after secondary school, towards the end, got involved with some wrong people and it kind of just escalated from there. And what about, you know, the area that you moved to? What sort of area was that? I was not an area, really. Just like, there's a bus every hour. Um, Chelmsford's pretty much a retirement city. It's quite old people there. There wasn't a lot of black people around me. I thought that that kind of just gave me like a boosted ego where I used to just act like a bit outlandish with things, innit? Just because I was the only kid there that was a different colour and I just thought that kind of pushed me to have that narrative of being a, like a naughty kid. I thought that at the time I didn't really have much role models. Like, I don't speak to my dad, so I don't have a father figure to kind of lead me the way to show me that, yo, this is not the right thing to do as a man. But yeah, I don't feel like I had much. I feel like if I had any role models, it was the wrong people and they were showing me the wrong ways of living. We start going to parties with all the people and they start doing different drugs rather than just smoking weed and drinking alcohol, start popping pills and stuff and doing like ket and stuff like that. And I feel like from then, the people that were selling it, I was good friends with, innit? So we just kind of grew and then start selling it with them. And from then, like, we just moved on. We got involved with some people that were selling hard food. Probably about year nine, it was just like in school, naughtiness. I feel like once it got to like year 10, year 11, so when I really started bringing that outside of school where Kind of was a thing that we used to start selling weed on the side, start making money off that, getting involved with other local little weed sellers out the same age as us, having little tear ups and that. And like, we just went from weed to start selling coke, start selling pills and that at parties. Then we went on to like selling hard food where we kind of like got involved with this one guy, telling us to go out to Brighton and that different places. So we went, I think it was like 15, 14. Do you mind explaining exactly what County Lines are like? It's pretty much just like, for me, I was like a runner, so I wasn't really like the main guy, but it'd just be taking food from different places. Say like the guys in London, we take the food from London, go Brighton, and then we'll set up shop in like some guy's house, or we have somewhere, somewhere to stay, and we start selling from there. Like the line was already built, so it was just a matter of answering the phone and... All you gotta do is go eat, go get money. Niggas need to do that shit for a little nigga. Let me stop, no, 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 let me not. <laughs> Niggas ain't never have nobody to do that for us, man. Out here, you had to just get your pack on your own. Like, you had to, you want to get some grams, nigga, you go get your grams and you go, ain't no nigga giving you no line and, hey, nigga, you get money on this phone and bring me, niggas ain't doing that. Ain't no niggas man. getting their own work and then moving that shit how they move it. That's nigga, a wish a nigga had a nigga. Yeah, nigga, nigga, wish a nigga had a nigga. Send me, send me OT and get some money, nigga. I wish. FX. So that was better, FX. The line was already built, so it was just a matter of answering the phone and going to meet these people. And I, I feel like I just kind of took the risk because the money was coming in and I was quite young as well, so kind of just feeding my addiction as well, like smoking weed and that and going out, so. How was it distributed between like you and your friends and like, how did that work? Like when we met the guy, we met him in like Chelmsford, didn't it? So we knew him from Chelmsford, but he was from London. So we used to go to London and we used to grab the food of him and like, I don't have to explain it, you know, like we used to go on the train, like conceal it, and then we'd, we'd get to the place where he'd tell us to go, we'd be like, oh, there's a, there's a user's yard that you're going to, or there's a scale's yard that you're going to go to. We'd go there and then we would like, organise the food and like bag it up, split it up and just distribute it from there. And, and if, if anything happened, we'd have to just set up a new house or go to a new, new user, give him some food to to let us stay in his house for the night or shut out his house until we move. What type of drugs is it that, you know? Uh, county line. It was a uh, crack and heroin. Mm. So hard food pretty much is what you call it. Hard food, pause. What sort of money would you say that you were making then? Uh, i say like probably the best week has like a run out. I probably made like two grand in a week. It wasn't really a thing where I was smart enough to save no money or. Well, the runners only get a hundred a day, bro. If you ain't got no money though, and you ain't doing nothing, yeah, but if you like a nigga that ain't got no motion, you ain't doing nothing, nigga. 
and niggas send you up to make a hundred dollars a day, nigga, and you was broke. That's like working a nine to five job. Just the risk is crazy because you're going to jail. Yeah, bro, a hundred a day. That's life. That's 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 decent. These little niggas out here is stupid. That's seven hundred a week. Shit, niggas ain't even making a hundred dollars a day. Three hundred for the week is crazy, but shit. 300 a week is crazy, but you got to think about it. Some of these little niggas live with their mom. Their mm-hmm. mom working. Their mom fucked up. So he just watching his mom struggle. Mm-hmm. Nigga, he ain't trying to do no job. A nigga going to give me a phone, and all I got to do is pass this shit out to them. A gold tea and pass this shit out, and I'm going to make money. My little dumb ass would have been out. Nigga would have gave me the opportunity. Yo, here, take this phone, gold tea. Well, we would have to negotiate the prices. Yeah. yeah I, ain't, I ain't going for 100 a day. <coughs> At least 70, 30, 60, 40, something. We got to have some kind of different split, nigga. Yeah, you ain't going to be fucking feeding me motherfucking nothing. Nice. You ain't going to feed me no crumbs and then, yeah, I'm going to jail and shit. See, Brian, I you ass get caught. You go it wasn't jail. really a thing where I was smart enough to save no money. And out here, you get caught OT. Out here, selling drugs. And your ID ain't that city. Like, you from the city. Like you got a Bronx address on your ID. And you all the way up in motherfucking... In motherfucking... Plattsburgh somewhere. Oh, yeah, they gonna smoke you. What? You get... You, you would've go got go two... On, yeah, survive, you would've bro. got two, three years out here for the shit. Or two years for it out here. Out there, they giving you eight. Yeah, I feel like even if you like in... Orange County or some shit like that, though. Like, or like... Binghamton and Binghamton like definitely Because like, Binghamton's a hustle estate like, So what the, what the fuck is you doing out here Like you all the way up You live yeah. all the way out there What the fuck is you doing up here You doing right something here? nigga Nah you trying to damage our community type shit Get yeah. him out of here No they smoking niggas Take this AP nigga Yeah they smoking niggas Shit that you got a year or two down In your city In the Bronx um, City of Bronx I'm going to be Use it properly I was just literally Using it to feed an addiction at the time just feed a lifestyle that I shouldn't have really been living. Do you know what sort of money the person above you was making, that your supplier? Whatever I made, he made seven times of. Because whatever pack I sold, I got 100 out of it, he got 700 back. So whatever that he was getting the food for, I don't know what he got the food for. Say he got it for like um, 200 pound per 80 bit pack, he'd probably make like 600, 700 per pack. So he'd probably be making like five, five, six times more than me in profit. How did he treat you? It was alright to be fair. Like a lot, of, a lot of the, lot of the times where I went dealing with other people as well, I got treated badly. But I, I was only there for like a few times. And I left because the the comparison between me in Brighton and me in this other place where I was is in Chelmsford. But I had to deal with these other people for a bit. I just left because these men just try to bump me. They used to try to treat me bad. They used to try to pay me and like weed and stuff and try to treat me as a girlie because I was young. But he never really treated me bad like that. He he wasn't he wasn't he wasn't he wasn't, he wasn't, a, he wasn't a, a bad person. I thought that like he was just. Involved in that, he used to, used to pay us right. He used to show us how to do it as well. So, for like, yeah, he weren't really that bad in it. You get worse people than him. And the sort of people that you were selling to uh, when you were in Brighton, what, what were they like? Just users, to be fair. There was users. I never really sold to other people. Like, I never sold to other dealers or was high enough to sell to other dealers, but it was just other users, isn't it? We sold to users of all ages, man. We used to sell to people that were like 19, 20 users, and people that were like 70, 60 years. And so, one couple that were. Um, I can't remember what their names were, but they were like 17 or 16, both of them. They were like my age. And we used to chill with them sometimes, we smoked zoots with them, but they were my age, they were users. Like both, they used to use hard, they used to use heroin and, and coke, so they were like, they've probably been injected since they were like 13 or 14, but they were young, man. They've literally been like hard users, they don't go to school or nothing, they just on the street all day. They were like girlfriend and boyfriend, but they were my age at the time, innit? So that hit, that hit quite close. Let's talk about. Um your mum and like your family, do you have communication with them? Yeah, I, I was very distant to my mum. I got a lot of missing persons um, filed for me because you know, I would be gone for like a week and a half and I'll come back and the police would just leave the whole into the investigation when I come back. But it happened quite a lot a few times. I feel like I went missing like four or three times and police were always at my door. They were always trying to find me. Police were going to like my ex-girlfriend's houses and that. And um, yeah, I feel like I was quite distant <laughs> to my mum. I kind of just ignored everything she said to me. 
kind of just pushed her out of the equation because she, I feel like she was the only person that held on for a long time <laughs> trying to get me out of this life. And she, also, she said to me as well that at a point she never saw me coming back. She, she thought that I'd be stuck in that life for good. And she still tried, she still was trying to call me, still filing reports and that. How long were you actually spending in Brighton? Two weeks, a week, most of the time. I'd come back and like, but the thing is I'd come back and go back to my, my friend's house. I wouldn't even go home. Like, I'd be gone for a month, like a month or less than a month from home. So I'd go to my friend's house, maybe come home for like a day or so. Sometimes my mum would even be in, she'd be working and I'd just be leave, leave again. Really? So it? yeah, those times my mum didn't What's see me for like three, three weeks most. Mommy at work. Mommy at work, bro. She working. Nigga ain't no snacks in the crib. Nigga ain't got no PlayStation. Nigga ain't got no motherfucking game system. Nothing. Ain't nothing that's gonna keep a nigga in the house. He just dead. No daddy. Like, what the fuck you think a nigga gonna do? Give me that, give me that pack. I just be working and I just be leave it, leave again. So, yeah, those times my mom didn't see me for like three weeks most of the time. I thought I was very shallow back then. I feel like now it makes me sad to me uh, to, to think that I made my mum feel that way for so long, but at the time, uh, to be honest, I, I didn't really care. You had run-ins with the police, right? Yeah, the day I got arrested was when I changed. The area we was in, like the, the strip area we was in, was very hot, so we like moved from like three yards in the same... The day I got arrested is the day I changed. The area we was in, like the, the strip area we was in, was very hot, so we like moved from like three yards in the same, in the same week. So there was a lot of police around, there was a lot of like meat wagons, like big police trucks. So I feel like they kind of really clocked up to us, but at the time I just kind of brushed it, I just kept on moving houses. So it got to a point where I moved to this um, one, one user's house. And when I've gone out to, um, gone like, I've gone out to go back to London actually, I've run out of, um, I ran out of food, I ran out of dark and I only had light on me. So I was going to go back to London to get more food off my supplier. And I've come out of the yard and there was like police everywhere, like there was police on the roads, there was police on bikes and I tried to cycle out and run away but I got caught obviously and I got taken to cells for that, for that day. How did it, how did that feel sort of when you were, when you were in the cells? Um, I feel like I kind of, when I first got arrested initially it kind of, it kind of hit me because I hadn't, I didn't have anything concealed, I had everything on me that could have got me jeopardised or put me in jail so I knew that at the time I was I was caught red-handed in it, so in cells, when I was waiting to be searched, um, yeah, I was stressed. Uh, I just I, all I could think about is what's my family gonna think, what's my mum gonna think? Because my mum didn't didn't actually know that I was like shot in hard food. She knew that I was selling drugs, but she didn't know that I was shot in like crack and heroin at the time. So she found out after I got arrested. Did you call her when you were in? There? Yeah, they talk, they asked me to call my mum because I was under eighteen, so I had to call my mum to get my mum there. What did she say when you called her? I don't actually remember, to be fair, but I just remember being like proper stressed. Maybe I remember our phone call made me sweat a lot, so I was stressed out at the time. What was it that you were charged with? Um, I got charged guilty on a basis for intent to supply, so I didn't get any jail time. I got put on tag for a year. Um, I got arrested for having a blade of dark call. I think that nigga said when I got arrested, that made me change. That nigga ain't gonna go to jail. Mm, yeah. He didn't even do it yet. You did it? No. So he ain't get no yeah. Got on tag for a year. Um, I got arrested for having a blade of dark call. Oh, fuck Got arrested for a robbery as well. But it was only like a minor one where I just stole some clothes with some guy. It was a slow month. And for it was like another and assault and as well. But this was something completely different. So I had all these at the same time that I was going to court for. Nigga, I don't know. So I, <laughs> It was a slow, it was a slow month for Lab Bible. They said we should go get somebody. In. You, you, come here. Nigga just walking down the street. <laughs> they just grabbed this nigga off. They just grabbed this nigga off the street. Like they was like, hmm. Hey, hey, you, come here. You better do some shit. <laughs> yeah, tell me, to, no matter of fact, listen. Make up a story right quick. Make up a story. So I had all these at the same time that I was going to court for. I don't know. So I saw my cousin go to jail at the time as well for the yeah, same sure thing, and mom. he's gone to jail for like twenty years now. So I was thinking, this, this is not worth it. Like, it's quick money, it's not worth it. As soon as I go to jail, I'm going to jail for like seven years. So it's gonna completely just even out. Like, I'm gonna make zero pounds in jail. Do you know what I mean? So seven years is gonna be, it's gonna add up to a normal wage if I, if I just live a normal life. Do you know what I mean? Or 
get my get my qualifications and live a comfortable life exactly. rather than so having to look over my back all the time and spend time in jail. Because so I didn't put anyone's name <laughs> down. I didn't get anyone in trouble for what I did. So it kind of let me push Lizzie, away Lizzie. without no repercussions. Do you know what I mean? I know there's a lot of other kids in different situations where they've they've not been stupid about it, but they've got out by snitching on the people that they work with and, and they get like maybe stabbed or Lizzie, get like um, threats made towards them. So. Yeah, it was, it was difficult in the fact that like, I lost a lot of friends, all the friends I was with for, for that whole time. I was friends with for a long time, like, friends with since I was like early teens. So completely lost friendship with them, didn't speak to them no more. And shortly after I found out both of them, my, my mates, they went to jail, so it wasn't the fact that I could even speak to them, so yeah. And the target restricted you to stay in what area? Essex. So I was not to, wasn't allowed to go to London. I wasn't allowed to leave anywhere other than Essex. And I'd have to um, speak to my parole officer if I wanted to go to any, if I wanted to go anywhere more than thirty miles out from my house. My um, curfew was nine o'clock, so it wasn't too bad. But I couldn't stay out after night or anything. I couldn't go out and do things. Do you know what I mean? I was located every single second of like my life for the the time I was on it and I kind of learned quite a lot of my brother so he was really nice to be fair like he was a good person he wasn't one of those guys that trying to indict me by telling me by letting me tell him information and get me done for it he was generally trying to help me and I feel like I built a trust with him over time and I feel like I kind of opened up to him quite a lot and he showed me like what I was doing weren't really helping and I feel like he, he opened my eyes to be fair and in terms of like what you focus on now just boxing, really. I just finished college. Um, I done my level four in engineering. Not really a fan of it, so I'm going back to uni next year, and I'm gonna go be doing computer science. So I gotta do like an axis year, so I'm gonna be there for like four years. But right now, it's just boxing. I train a lot, so the main thing I focus on is boxing. Mom, I feel like my mom was probably the least person to to put consequences on me, at the sense that she kind of understood that what I was doing, I got addicted to. And she was kind of kind of soft to me on it, to be fair, yes. but she just made sure that I was safe and she got CCTV around the house and that because she was a bit pranked that anyone would come back and, and try to do me over for for leaving, leaving that sort of lifestyle. I'm close to my mum. I've always been close to my mum, but I kind of pushed her away for... This nigga might have snitched. Nah, I don't. I think he might have told him, man. <coughs> this nigga might have told man. He might have told him, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. Why'd you say that? I don't know, man. I'm just getting a funny vibe, man. This nigga might have told. He might have told, bro. He ain't do no jail time. Like, nigga had the flicky on him. He did a robbery. Yeah, come on. He did do a robbery, he said. A robbery. But he said he only took clothes off a nigga back. Yeah, bro, I don't know, That's man. <laughs> Let me get that. That was a robbery, nigga. Yeah, man. I don't know about this nigga, man. Yeah, man. I don't know about this nigga. Man. I don't know about this nigga. I think, I think these niggas just grabbed this nigga off the corner. <laughs> they see this, he was waiting for the bus. They said, You want $100? You want 100 pounds right quick? Let the interview you. You need 100 pounds right quick, man. You need 20 pounds right quick, man. Come let me interview you right you quick. Yeah, that nigga, nah, 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 that nigga told. Nigga said, what are you doing now? He said, I just finished college. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm trained for um, boxing. Yeah, that nigga told, man. Listen, man, like, comment, subscribe. We out of this shit, man. We don't want to hear the rest of this shit. What did you just say, Kelly? Yeah, I said some better ones in the comments. Okay, of course. Repeat that, young man. <laughs> I say he took with a sensible force. <laughs> I get it. Well, man, take a shot. <laughs>